is questionable. Um, I think he has uh, tightness in his hip, but um, everybody else should be good to go. How weird is it for you seeing LeBron in, in Lakers colors? Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's not that weird. It's more exciting. You know, I mean, I grew up in LA as a Laker fan, and, uh, so the Laker franchise has always meant so much to the league. You know, Lakers, Celtics, really the two flagship franchises. And um, for me, just growing up, with the purple and gold. Um, you know, there's an extra sentiment there. So to see uh, doesn't mean I cheer for them, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's just that was my team growing up. So um, they, they've always had a lot of star power. Um, you know, when I was watching, it was Magic and Kareem and Worthy, and, and uh, obviously there have been many others, Kobe, and uh, it's it's I think it's great for the league to see LeBron and uh, in a Lake. Coach, it's a preseason game, so you don't want to obviously wear your players out, minutes are limited, but you also want to get a good gauge. This is obviously a game in which you can get a good gauge with the minutes that they're going to put out there. Um, how much stock do you want to put into this game, and what are you looking for out of this? Well, we've had a really good camp. We had a disappointing game the other night, um, at least in the first half. I didn't see any in the second half. I, I haven't talked to anybody about how the second half went. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> Sorry, um, I, but no, we, we only have two exhibition games left. So, um, you know, we've talked about you know, as we get closer, we're six days away now from the games counting. You know, we want to wrap it up a little bit. Doesn't mean I'm going to play everybody you know, big minutes, but um, we want our defense to be better. Uh, we want to be a little sharper tonight than we were the other night. And, uh, and then Friday, probably ramp up the minutes a little bit for conditioning purposes, and hopefully we're uh, ready to roll Tuesday night against OKC. Steve, what have you thought about how Rick Solgrini has acclimated himself with you guys? In the Rick's great. You know, he's a uh, typical Canadian. You know, self-effacing, uh, fun to be around, um, just humble and, and uh, really, really smart. Uh, and I think his experience working with uh, elite athletes in a unique way uh, is really going to benefit our organization and, and our guys, especially as our you know, our core guys are enter their kind of, you know, the, getting close to 30, right? So they're entering that stage of their career where they really need to make that shift, uh, where they've got to start paying extra attention to their bodies and uh, their preparation and their recovery. It's really Rick's specialty, and that's one of the reasons we hired him. But he fits right in with the culture. He's, uh, he's really a fun person. To be when Chelsea left, was he one of the first names that came to your mind? He was the first person, and we didn't think we'd, we'd get him. Um, I've known him since uh, my days in Phoenix when he was working with Steve Nash. Uh, Steve hired him on an individual basis, but he would come down from Vancouver to work with Steve in Phoenix. So I got to know him a little bit, and I'd watch him on the floor with Steve. And they were doing really innovative stuff. And uh, so he was the first person that I thought of and that we started thinking about as a staff. And uh, we didn't think we'd be able to get him, but um, we're lucky we did. For these it's, first few weeks, has it just been for him just studying the guys and learning their movements and how they? Uh, to be honest, I think the first few weeks have been about him just acclimating to his new surroundings and getting to know the organization in the Bay Area and, and uh, moving to a new city. And you know, his family staying behind in Vancouver this year. Uh, so it's there's a lot going on for him, but he's getting to know the players really well, and I think everybody's getting more and more comfortable as we go. Hey Steve, it's obviously early, but how, what's your initial impressions of how the, the three young centers have handled the adjustment that comes with losing some of the vets that you guys lost uh, with think, Javel and Zaza? Yeah, and I think they've been, they've been good. Um, I think they've played well. DJ's really showed us uh, some uh, athleticism and force, uh, which we wanted. Um, we knew what Loon and JB could do, but we, we also expect them to take another step in their development. And then I think the biggest thing is communication defensively. That's what we're looking for. All three of those guys are on the quiet side, uh, and we need them to take a step up and really uh, be loud, uh, calling out coverages. And, um, and it's important for the, the other players to step into that leadership void with 
Zaza and David gone in particular. Uh, you know, we need we need Andre and, and Steph and, and Draymond, KD to uh, to nurture these younger guys a little bit more. How weird is it going to be for you now? I know LeBron's not the only new face. You got Javale on the yeah. other side. Yeah. So how? What are your thoughts about that facing him? It'll be fun. I mean, we we all love Javale here. It's a great two years. You know, it was the perfect marriage, really, because uh, he gave us something we didn't have, um, that, that lob thread and the speed. And, um, it was a huge weapon for us, um, part of our center by committee approach. And uh, I think we helped him uh, turn his career around. It had been a couple of years since he had really played. And, and so I think, uh, you know, we were sad to see him go, but happy for him that he landed in L.A. with a great team. And, um, in, a, in a city where he's very comfortable, and um, it'll be fun to see him tonight. I have to see DeMarcus out here. Is he doing more in the last uh, week or so? He's still um, doing a lot more stuff on his own with Rick uh, in the training room, in the weight room, and then after practice, he's getting a lot of conditioning on court work with uh, JC and uh, playing some full court, two on two, three on three, just trying to get his. His, uh, his wind back. It's you know it's tough enough for anybody to come back from a nine ten month injury, but especially a, a big guy uh, who carries a lot of size like me. Uh, tough to get that conditioning and that um, that movement back. And so he's spending a lot of time working really hard. And hopefully we'll we'll get him more involved in practices now as he's as he continues to work his way back. So, Is there? Yeah, he still hasn't done any contact um, in terms of our drill work and, and uh, five on five. But, but he has, he, like I said, he's played some light two on two full court uh, for the conditioning aspect of it. But we're being careful with not letting him. Have you got those, those two on two sessions? So they're kind of, like you mentioned, they're pretty light. Like you can't have guys banging into right. too hard. Yeah, he can't exactly have uh, the physicality, but the running and the shooting and the ball handling. It's all really important. Stuff. Have you gotten a sense of how imminent or how far away contact might be next? No. Yeah. No, we're just literally just taking it kind of week by week. and uh, But he's ramping up the conditioning aspect of it, which is a good sign. Coach, this has always been a, a Laker town. In the NBA summer, we brought all the teams this past summer. The Golden Knights have energized the city. Is Las Vegas ready to have an NBA team in the next, let's say, five years? Or is it a potential NBA city? Well, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but um, I do know that this is an NBA arena, and um, I know they supported the city, supported the the, the Knights uh, this past year, and um, it seems like a uh, you know a logical spot in the future. Um, but I know there's a lot more that goes into it that I I haven't studied, you know, corporate money and uh, TV market size, all that stuff. Um, but you know, I'm sure the league has more than done their homework on that stuff. And, uh, it's always fun to come here in summer league, and, it's, and you know that there's a lot of uh, passion for the game here based on summer league. And every exhibition I've, game, I've played here, um, which is many, going back to my days with the Bulls, uh, arena, whether it's Thomas and I or here, we've gotten great crowds and great energy. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.